This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. Are you interested in wildlife? In particular, are you interested in plants and animals in South America? Where life is diverse and abundant, closely connected to fertile soils from volcanoes with hundreds of streams and rivers flowing down to the coast, where toucans depend on fruits and seeds, as does a myriad of rainforest inhabitants. That includes a large animal that you probably never knew existed and which is effectively a botanist and surprisingly directly connected to two of the most widely consumed plant products on the planet, coffee and chocolate. Chances are you are interested in those. So are many millions of other people. Meanwhile, back in the jungle, home of that coffee and chocolate too, and much else. Some hide from predators like snakes. Yes, it really is a jungle out there. Some butterflies are see-through, sort of camouflage. If you're an agouti, a kind of tasty guinea pig, to survive, you'll need all the senses at your disposal. Sight, smell, hearing. Indeed, a dangerous and beautiful paradise. And as ever, it's the plants that are the basis of it all, and which, in this story, connects us. Uh, and the sort of stage we are at now, is that the consumer is leading the industry by asking for provenance uh, and stories of coffee. And the great thing nowadays is that you can pretty much taste if the coffee is an ethical... Coffee, chocolate, also a massive business. And wildlife in an extraordinary way, one that you've probably never thought of, because it also includes a man planting a forest. So I guess in there without... Roots. And a team tracking down rare orchids. Oh, there's a lot of plants here, all right. A lot of beautiful orchids. And I'm quite sure it's a new species. But at least plants don't run away. Mountain tapirs definitely do. It's a story over time featuring a baby one, so different looking, called Esperanza, which means hope. But will it come true? This is classic archive footage from 1992, narrated by Ian McShane. They're hunting one of the rarest large animals in the world. High in the Andes of Ecuador and South America is the home of the mountain tapir. Only a few thousand still exist. As a sad result of the hunt, sometimes one of these is orphaned. Yes, it's a baby mountain tapir, quite different from its mother. This is the story of one such baby, who is to turn out to be a very special tapir, providing a unique chance to get to know this extremely rare, endangered creature from the remote Andes. It wasn't hard making friends, it was mutual. But her best friend was going to turn out to be this local man, Armando Castellanos. And as a result of knowing her, he was to become one of the few people in the world who know anything about the mountain tapir. 
he called her Esperanza. Esperanza means hope, and Armundo's hope was that he'd find out much more about her species than he'd been able to on his expeditions into the mountains. For example, he could find out about her food preferences and document the changing pattern of her coat. The spots are believed to help in camouflage, but mountain tapirs are so threatened that very little can protect her from the sort of experience she previously survived, just along a river which she may well remember. This time it's different. Though this female taper is being stressed, it may possibly be for her own good. The radio call they're putting on is another attempt to find out more about the elusive tapir, so as perhaps to protect it. This technique, now widely used on many animals, will be a key tool in the latest research. No, no, they had KRO Coming out of the water, she's still a little afraid. In charge of this project is Craig Downer an American biologist who is one of that tiny group who might call themselves experts on the mountain tapir. Both are a rare breed. It will turn out that the future of her rare species may be affected by our addiction to coffee and chocolate. By now, Esperanza has grown her fully adult coat, complete with distinctive white mouth. Hey, toma, ve. Oye, oye, oye. For her, it's collar time too, and it's Armundo, Craig Downer's previous field assistant, who puts it on. From her point of view, life recently has been relaxed, with feeding or being fed the main interest. Esperanza! 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 This is Esperanza, the botanist. Now, wearing a collar, she'll be free to roam. And is it her liking of water that leads her here? It seems young mountain tapirs are inquisitive. And so already some of the hopes from Esperanza for insights into tapir life are being realized. Of course, her natural behavior must be greatly modified by humans and where she lives. But it's a lot better than nothing, or almost nothing. What little is known about true wild tapirs is about to be added to by a determined effort by Armundo's colleague, Craig Downer, now in Quito. This is the capital of Ecuador, a cool 9,000 feet above the hot, steamy coast. Up from here to Tepe country is another 8,000 feet. It'll be freezing cold, wet and dangerous, so fate hopefully will smile on Craig Downer and his expedition. As they'll discover, this problem comes from where they're going, and it's part of the challenge to protect the tapir. Rivers replace roads, tracks replace roads. Walking replaces driving, 
and Craig's hat is the order of the day. Then comes the forest. Call it cloud forest, rain forest, anyway it's drenching forest, and yes, tapirs do like water. So could this be a good place for them? It certainly seems wet enough. But that's hardly good for photography. Meanwhile, our mundo search is a little easier. Esperanza, with her collar on, is now somewhere in Pasochoa Nature Reserve near Quito. This fertile, protected valley would seem to be an ideal place in which to follow her daily life. It's a rare opportunity for our mundo. First the bait, then the deal. This time it's about weight. Adult mountain tapirs normally weigh about 350 pounds. Now Armundo and the nature reserve staff can watch Esperanza's weight and keep track, not only of her, but of what happens to all that fruit and veg she eats. Next, after weighing, measuring. That's more tricky. But Armando knows what she likes. He just keeps tickling. <laughs> in the right spot. Again, vital statistics, but more difficult to collect when she comes round. She does like being tickled. The feeding kit. The breeding and the tickling kit. The climbing kit. And the wake up kit. And maybe it's even good for seeing in the dark.
The trouble with wildlife photography is often the weather or the animals not being there. In this case, for Craig, stuck in the rain, it's both. It's the forests of Ecuador, Peru and Colombia that have that crucial link with those familiar products. Coffee and chocolate, drunk and eaten by millions. And how many more millions to come? As our demand and human numbers increase, these ancient forests of great diversity will be replaced by monocultures. You could say, but probably wouldn't want to, that's the real cost of a cup of coffee or a chocolate snack. This forest, filmed back in 1992, is not there anymore. No toucans, no orchids. Is there any hope for the likes of Esperanza? Which means hope. The diversity is amazing, and the tepe utilises it in a very selective way. And without knowing its special requirements, it's impossible to protect it properly. This helps, as each tapir picks from the menu it leaves a trail of evidence behind it. Seedlings germinate to tell the story and tracks lead the way. But where to? As usual, the solution's often a nice cup of tea. But now things are getting serious. Experienced dogs are brought in as they search every possible feeding area. The right plants, like these ferns, are here. Craig's detailed research, both here in Ecuador and in the United States with germination experiments, have shown that mountain tapirs eat a great range of plants and are probably crucial in distributing them. And there's a mineral seep, which tapirs are known to favor. It's an indication of the volcanic nature of this area, and it's up to the volcanoes that Craig and his team must now go. And one of them may have tapirs. It's called Sangai. It's very high, and it's very active. Esperanza is now able to do what no other mountain tapir in Ecuador can, help educate people, locally. And through worldwide television, she really can help promote her cause. In the wild, as Craig is finding out again, they're almost impossible to see. But with Esperanza, it's a chance for Ecuadorians to examine, and even to touch, an animal they didn't know existed. Teaching Armundo what she eats. Fuchsias grow wild in the Andes. But what next for Esperanza in the name of hope? Should she remain as an educational asset on her own? Should a mate be found for her? Should they build a breeding enclosure? If so, where? Or should she be put back in the wild? Then the big question is, where would she be safe enough from poachers, disturbance, and even volcanoes? As Armando ponders all this, the decision may be made for him. Maybe Esperanza herself knows the answer. Someone who's still getting no answers at all is Craig Downer, now high on the slopes of the Sangai volcano. They haven't been erupted on yet, and they're not quite lost. In fact, they're also looking for a possible place for the release of Esperanza. As Sangai is a national park, apart from eruptions, it should be safe enough and right for tapirs. At 
last some answers. But more questions. Are the tapirs previously collared by Craig still out there? And that therein lies the problem here. It's a long way to go for a black dot in the long grass. And it's one thing to see it, sort of, quite another to film it. The best shot was yet to come. <laughs> and that was it. A mountain tapir in its natural habitat, a rare and typically distant glimpse. They knew from its shyness that tapirs must be hunted here despite being in a national park. So would this be a good place for Esperanza? Back with Armundo, the problem was about to be solved. His concern about Esperanza's future was building up. He was worried about her. Nothing came through from her radio collar. <laughs> A condor, the undertaker of the Andes. Something had died turned out to be Esperanza. She died from rabies, aged three. But here's the crunch, not rabies, but the world's appetite for those hugely popular favorites, coffee and chocolate. Landscapes are changed completely for those crops and cattle too. Gone is the diversity of the forests, from the coast to the slopes of the volcanoes. Once cleared, the fields are intensively farmed no room for tapirs here. If they're plowed vertically, the unprotected soil may be washed down to the rivers, which become loaded with silt. So the mountain tapirs' future is part of something much bigger, with a protective covering of forest, but without the overgrazing by cattle, and without the pressure of people who disturb and hunt tapirs, the Andes might be able to sustain the Ecuadorians, the tapirs, and the multinational companies from abroad. With clean lakes and rivers, there will be fish. With well-controlled livestock, there will be meat. But with cattle and poachers in national parks, there will be no more tapirs. No more esperanzas. No more hope. Esperanza, the gentle botanist, lived and died in this valley and taught us a little about her rare kind and became a star. Hopefully, 
She did not die in vain. Esperanza. Esperanza. Toma. So let's really assess the true cost of a cup of coffee, a bar of chocolate, or an Easter egg. Not just to the customers, but to the place on which it all depends. It could be the coastal forests of Costa Rica, home to the king vulture, which can smell a meal from far away, down there on the ground. Curacao's are here too, feeding on a great variety of jungle plants. It's where a really slow tree climber, with plants that grow on its fur, descends occasionally to defecate. That's risky when this happens. A sloth can't run away. From the lowlands to the foothills of the Andes, the true cost of coffee and chocolate can have a drastic impact. Though there may be some better news to come later. But meanwhile, squirrels and howler monkeys run for it. So do lizards, kind of Christ-like, a dragon passing a dragon fly in this emergency. And a hummingbird can just buzz off, though its tiny nest will be destroyed in the approaching blaze. And that's followed by the plough. and the cows, thousands of them. With the end result being a kind of parkland with just a few original trees left standing in a sea of grass. Not much biodiversity here. It may look nice, but it's a part of the price of our favorite sweets and drinks. In the face of this growing change on the slopes of the Andes, where mountain tapirs try to survive, one man is trying to replant the original trees. His name is Morley Reed. Once felled for coffee, chocolate and other crops, but it's a race against time. I guess in there without damaging the roots. Trees can take a long time to grow, at least to the stage where their biodiversity is rich and winning. but it takes a comparatively short time to destroy them in the name, some would say, in the names of the terrible two, coffee and chocolate. And it's our, the consumer's, hand that's on the chainsaw. But it doesn't have to be like this, as we'll see.
That's better. That's possible. Maybe. The question is, can we retain the original forests and their rich mix of wildlife, plus perhaps useful medical plants for the future? Even ones that the gentle botanist Esperanza, the mountain tapir, selected in her short life. Her home has and maybe will be changed by us and the thinned out trees and cleared areas are a reminder of that. The sad and guilty history of slave labour, even using children apparently, which George Clooney, he of Nespresso fame, has been quoted, surprised and saddened. This is now a very big business, perhaps colliding with nature, using animals to improve the picture, especially at Easter egg time. Some say the wild version should be appreciated too by protecting their home. The planet needs the plants, the plants need the planet, and above all, we depend on the whole intricate, vulnerable system. That's a reason to be worried when the big boys like Cadbury's and Ferrero and Mars move in to provide us, which could be said to be the two addictions. And they don't come much bigger than Nestle, one of the most far-reaching food companies in the world. Based in Switzerland, the world's biggest consumer of chocolate per head of population, it's invested 122 million pounds in the city of Veracruz in Mexico to process 20,000 tonnes of coffee beans a year. But how many frogs in a rainforest will that cost? The frog symbol for conservation helps. On the other hand, the label lists palm oil as an ingredient, meaning rainforest was cleared to grow it. Palm oil is a monoculture. No room for frogs there when places like this are cleared for crops. There's no home, no little hope for animals, like the mountain tapir, like Esperanza, which means hope. And the pressure increases, the big boys expand even further, linking up with mega giants like McDonald's, Coca-Cola and Starbucks now moving into China and including all that packaging that's involved. Some 90 million Easter eggs over 3,000 tonnes of waste, which may or may not be recycled. That's the equivalent of 237 double-decker buses. Well, now you know. Talk of peak coffee too. And when? Well, who's the winner in all this? Could it just be Esperanza? Coffee can be grown in the shade which means other wildlife can share the benefits of the vegetation above. From many insects, some new to science, to white-faced saki monkeys, and a gentle botanist, also well worth protecting. Some good news. Shirts can be made with waste coffee grounds and recycled plastic. So can face masks. And pulp waste can be spread on deforested land to regrow it. Perhaps to the benefit of tapirs. For example, in other South American countries like Peru. There, Rainforest Rescue helped with a fine of 30 million euros against illegal deforestation to grow cocoa beans for chocolate. And in nearby Colombia, despite less than 25% of the original vegetation in the tropical Andes intact today, encouraging local efforts are being made to help the mountain tapir and its home. Funds from this picture education, research and cooperation with local people will all protect, hopefully, Esperanzas of the future. <laughs>